Can you hear my microphone? I didn't even set it up on YouTube, so I don't know how it's going through to you guys. <laughs> Let me try and find this. There we go. What's up? Music is good volume. Yes, you guys can hear me. Perfect. Fantastic. Bit of a chill one today. Figured I'd get into the nitty gritty of questions and answers. So I can focus a little bit more on the chat, speak to you guys, rather than try to play Elden Ring at the same time. It's, uh, that game's a little tricky, so this is a little bit easier to talk to you guys. Drop your questions in the chat. We're going to roll through some. Uh, I have some written down here as well, which we can get into. Your questions coming in. I would personally analyze why the breakup happened. Maybe it was your choice, maybe it was their choice, and that kind of dictates how you would feel. Usually, if it's your choice, you have skills that you yourself need to work on. That can be an issue. A lot of the bad relationships that I see and I've had have experienced in the past were in numerous ways and a lot of that is working on your own shadow so there's judging there's projecting there's criticizing the other person uh, a lot of the fights that happened that I've had happen in the past were really over nothing they were either resulted because I had standards that weren't being met or I was stuffing up and they were reacting to that. Uh, keeps lagging, cutting out. Yeah, that might be my internet. Sorry about that. Um, I'm kind of 
in the shed, as you can see. So the the Skylink or Starlink sometimes cuts out be because of the internet. But advice if you've gone through, if someone's just broken up with you, analyze where you could have gone wrong. Where are you leading as the man? Were you working on yourself? Uh, because maybe the girl was not impressed with what you were doing and what kind of man you were being and you were letting and they want maybe they express things that they think they want but it makes you change who you are and that's a, an issue to avoid that even if the girl may want you to be comfortable and not go to the gym or why are you spending so much time doing sales come on just do this with me and that's not their fault <clears throat> but you have to have this is the time that I work on myself and that's going to be the case no matter if I'm in a relationship or not. If you're in a relationship, you let that slide. That's your choice. That's your decision. And that can be a common one where people get tripped up and then it's like they lose attraction. And um, yeah, you stuff yourself up in the long term doing that. But if you're going through hard times, inevitably, if you spend a lot of time with someone, it can be sad to break up. It is sad to break up with people, even if it was really hectic and not a good time towards the end of the breakup and you finally make that decision to leave, it can still be very intense. So understand that. Yeah, that's, that's heartbreak. And sometimes time is all that will, time will heal all wounds. My dad always used to say that. And it's true. And you may not see it now, but in a few weeks or a few months, you'll look back and be like, yeah, uh, that was good that I went through that. So if it feels rough, you just have to Dive headfirst into hobbies, your friends that you may have neglected during the relationship, and uh, yeah, busy yourself with work, with improving yourself, hitting the gym, using all of that quote unquote negative energy into something better. Uh, distracting. Um, so, the way I'll do this is I've got the questions on the PDF, but if you guys have tangent related questions to the question I'm talking about in the chat I will you know reply to that and then all the other questions that were linked at the end we'll, we'll work through at the end so how about finding a replacement look there's the whole rebound thing it's a bit nuanced because you don't want to because you're feeling lonely instantly jump into something else which is not good for you just because you can't stand being alone so avoid that. Make sure you're not doing that. That being said, once you possibly leave or leave the relationship that wasn't good or break up, have the person break up with you, you may now have some ability to meet someone that is much better for you. That's a possibility. Um, I think that there is some spiritual level to this where if you finally have the strength to leave a relationship that's bad for you, you now open yourself up to other energies and connections that can help you. So if it's not a rebound as such and you're just, you're not going out in the nightclub just to find someone to cuddle with, uh, you can find someone uh, relatively soon and that will take your mind off of it. Uh, but definitely do not fall into the trap of just getting with someone or hanging out with them when you haven't dealt with the things that maybe led to the relationship dissonance in the first place because that's like a cycle you know, oh this person but this person will be better and then you do that and you lose yourself in that again uh, I've seen that happen to people as well retain your seed perfect one I recommend that in relationships as well uh, but that same effect that you get maybe from masturbation or excessive ejaculation your prolactin increases and that changes the way you feel about life and how confident you are. So retaining your semen can actually be a very powerful tool to get that confidence back, get that manly oomph and energy back into you to the point where you'll be fine being alone outside the relationship. Uh, really, time heals all wounds and um, the way that you can do that is just by losing yourself and improving yourself and becoming better. What's my best advice for a teenager looking to improve his life, spirituality, and to achieve his goals? 
let's hit some macro points. Be in the gym, physically training. It doesn't have to be in the gym, but make sure you're physically training because you can make like everything else can come later. You're still only a teenager and I don't want that to limit you. You know, great leaders and kings have been 18, 19 uh, at the time. But I would, you know, in that same vein, I would try to take on more responsibilities, leadership, um, you know, even if, that, if that's at school or college, leadership roles, helping the younger kids uh, beneath you. And um, don't let your age limit you. Now, I'm just a teenager. Get a job. Get any kind of job, physical labor, or whatever else is in your environment and in your community. Uh, because having that purpose, especially as a teenager, really puts you above other people that may not be working and gives you that independence because you have an income. Uh, as much as you can improve your diet, start, hopefully if you get a job, buying your own food. If your home environment isn't necessarily great, you know, we love our parents, we love our family, and we're so grateful for everything they do for us. Uh, if you want to submit a question, just drop it in the chat. I'll get to it at the end. But yeah. So you have that extra money from working, now you can take more control over what you're eating. That's going to be a really powerful one. Little things you can do, get a shower filter, spend more time in the sun. These are all things that I would say to anyone to improve their life. Do grounding, spend more time in nature. Uh, you will find your spiritual connection grows, your responsibility, your intuition all develops by doing these things. It doesn't matter if you're a teenager, you know, 30s, 20s, whatever it is, 60s, anyone can do these things. Uh, to achieve your goals, best advice, figure out what your goals are. What can you do each day to practice something or work on something that will get you closer to those goals? Uh, really structure that out and figure out, okay, what do I want? I've never been one for like, okay, I'll write down my goals and then this is step, this step. Didn't really happen for me, but I've always had this like overarching idea of who I could be, what I want, and then doing things each day uh, to create that is, is really important. And understanding what you want to work towards. And if you can get ahead of that as a teenager, I didn't really start working consistently and, and in a focused way towards these goals to like my mid 20s, really. So if you can do that, what, seven years old, older, seven years earlier as an 18 year old, man, you'll be ahead of the game. You'll be really, really ahead of the game. Lots of stuff you can do. Obviously, my general advice goes for teenagers or anyone. What training style are you currently utilizing? Right now, I have absolutely sore uh, from my workout yesterday and, and before that, but the training style I'm currently doing in the gym specifically, I'm doing a structure where I, I go in and I have an upper body day and a lower body day. Usually I'll train upper, then lower, sorry, upper body day, rest day, lower body day, rest day, repeat. So that's a four day cycle. And I'll go in the gym and now my knowledge of exercise is, is so vast and great uh, relatively that I can go in and just kind of feel what I want to do. So the other day I went in upper body and I did dips and then I did heavy dips uh, with like a lot of weight. So really the general structure that I'm doing right now is this kind of Mike Mensa, heavy duty intensity based stuff where I'll do one set of a warm up of the exercise, higher reps and push the blood into the area, get used to the movement. Then I'll do another set, which is decently heavy, maybe eight to 10 reps, uh, getting my body primed, ready for the next lift. And then the major working set is going to be pretty much as heavy as you can handle for like six reps. So really pushing the tank, uh, not particularly high volume, even though I do do a lot of volume, but relatively it's like warm up set, heavier set, heaviest set, and really go for broke on that second set where it's really heavy. So whatever exercise you're doing, it's gonna be all out and then a drop set once you finish that heavy set uh, in whatever exercise, you know, lower dumbbell or lower on the machine, on the cables, whatever you're doing uh, to drop set and really just burn out your muscles entirely. So 
And that's it for that exercise. It's not three sets of 12 reps or four sets. It's like a warm up set, which is relatively easy uh, just to get used to it. Heavier set and then the heaviest set, which you do on each exercise. Then I'll do about five or six exercises of that nature. For the upper body recently, I did heavy dips. Uh, I did barbell rows. I did incline dumbbell chest press. Uh, and then an arms kind of like giga tri drop set. Uh, so really heavy, lots of volume, but within a couple of exercises. And then I'm done. I'm like an hour in the gym, hour and a half if I'm really, you know, taking it slow. But uh, the intensity and how far you can push yourself within a lower number of sets is really important. And then you're not completely blitzing your body. You're getting the hypertrophic response and stimulus and getting that signal to your body. Okay, we, we, we need to improve and get stronger, but you're not completely totaling your body and you can recover a lot better and train a lot better. Then you have the rest day after that. I'm not going five or six times in a week because that's, it's too much. It's not needed for developing your body as long as your intensity is high in that moment. So right now, that's what I'm doing in terms of my training. What was the biggest challenge you faced when breaking free from the mundane and becoming your own man? The first and really only challenge you face is yourself. Yourself and your self-perceived limitations and what you don't do or what you do do is going to be the only thing that holds you back and is going to be the biggest challenge you face. Like, will you put in the work each day, train, stick to your diet, sleep properly, creatively express yourself each day practice whatever skill you want to get better at uh, yes I'm standing right now uh, standing's better I'm also at a pretty high desk I also don't have a chair I was sitting on like a step ladder before because I'm in the shed but yeah standing right now so the biggest challenge you face is yourself and being lazy and that's really the biggest key to the puzzle because nothing can stop you other than yourself. You may have ideas that you think other things or people can stop you or influence you. That's nonsense because ultimately no one is like gun to your head, say, hey, don't go to the gym. Don't creatively put something out online. Don't improve your relationships by being more truthful. All of that is up to you. So the biggest challenge I had was the fear of people judging me for doing something different. That's a big one. And I guess, so there's like yourself is the biggest challenges. And then you have the challenges that you may face from other people, which are usually only a perception of that, which is yourself again. So it's all related to yourself, but the challenges and energies that we can receive from other people, the judgments, or people saying, oh, that's silly, man. Don't try to do that. Or why, why do you want to do that? So that is an issue, especially if they're people that we care about or we want to make them happy or proud, parents, family, close friends. If they say, hey, man, that's silly. Don't do that. That is a big challenge because we want to be liked by our community. But you have to decouple the approval of others from yourself and what you're doing. That's a big challenge. Once you break that totally, be like, you know what? Stuff that they may have well-meaning intentions, but they are not me. So you have to break that. That's one of the biggest challenges. Uh, the mundane. What is the mundane? The normal, the normy kind of nine to five. And, um, the other side of it is that the things that will break you out of that can be mundane. Going to the gym for weeks on end. Like that's not meant mundane to me, but it can be seen as the consistency of discipline 
can be viewed as mundane. So I would just perceive that differently. Like they're just the tasks that you need to be disciplined in to do so. And it's not mundane to do that instead of going out and getting wasted and kind of wasting your weekend. Think about that. I'm getting wasted having drinks. So you're wasted. You're wasting time doing that. Think about that. Uh, so yeah, there are some of the biggest challenges I've faced becoming my own man. You'll listen to your intuition more rather than what other people say or what society may want for you. That is very, very important. Next question. What is the word intuition? It is what makes the wolves act like wolves. And in my experience, you have a connection to that because you're part of this world and you can utilize that connection. But it is, you know, I used to be an atheist. I used to think there's only the science, the logic, and that's it. And we're here and it's all natural selection and physics and there's nothing else to explain this world. Then I started reading more. You know, I grew up in a religious school. I threw it away. Uh, it didn't make sense to me. They weren't explaining it in the ways that I now know of what God is. It doesn't mean you have to worship God through a religion. It's your own personal connection that you have with the divine that all religion hints to, but it's not necessarily the only way to go about it. And now in my experience and in my spiritual connection, there is undeniable, it's undeniable that something exists that is like that. So that's what God is to me right now. <laughs> is there a soul way in sex? Of course. So what you have to understand about sex is S-E-X, sacred energy exchange. Anytime we have sex with someone, we are connecting energies. There is a reason why marriage was thought of, well, sorry, the first time, Historically, the first time you have sex is on the wedding night because having sex with someone is really the marriage of your sexual energies, of your energy fields. And if you're having sex with someone whose energy is way off or you don't know too well, you don't know their context, their energy that they have within them, you're bringing that into yourself. So the sole way in sex would be being cognizant of that, really only having sex with someone that you could see yourself having a longer term relationship with because that's going to be the way that you protect your own spiritual energy, your own sacred energy. And that's important to think about. Otherwise, having sex with some level of semen retention, not busting every single time, you can still have enjoyable sexual connections with people. I would argue more enjoyable and energetically resonant when you're not ejaculating every single time. So, they're the two major things that I would think about uh, when having sex with someone. And then also consider that every time you have sex, you could possibly have a kid with them. And so don't have sex with someone unless you would be okay with that. That's really like the macro perspective that you should have with these things. What are some ways society is falling away from truth and health? <laughs> this is a long, long question, but I'll, I'll try and just speak on a few major things. I think first of all, the perspective that science knows best and science is a great tool, but now under the cloak of science, we'd be given these truths. Oh, they said in this study that uh, you know, you should get this experimental treatment to protect yourself against this novel virus that's coming through. And uh, people will outsource their own education to the white coats on the news. And thus, there's no discerning factors about, okay, why are they saying this? Who funded these so-called studies? And are these studies even valid? 
Um, so people and society are outsourcing their own knowledge and intuition to a group that may have ulterior motives. They do have ulterior motives. Like it's a symmetry who aren't creating more vital people. It's, it's symptom management and most of the time symptom creation because they're further poisoning you because they don't understand true health. Doctors and whatever else, there are great doctors out there. Most, I would argue, they don't look like the vital, healthy beasts that you want. They're under blue light. Uh, so you have to understand that because of the profit-driven mechanisms in action, you're perhaps not getting the best advice. So society is falling away from that. People also aren't listening to their own intuition, their own bodies. If you eat something you don't feel good, that's all the advice you need or all the information you need to stop doing that. But then if you read a news article which says red meat is bad for you, uh, have this soy milk blend instead, then you're going to fall away from truth and health, which is not good. I would say that community and human interaction is decreasing uh, in a face-to-face -face manner because of a whole bunch of things, primarily technology. And it's at the point where most people don't even make eye contact with you out in the street or in the store. It's like, Ugh, I don't want to look at people. Ugh. Hey, how are you? Ugh. There's, there's that human interaction and connection is kind of decreasing because people are just staring at screens all the time. So that inevitably makes people feel more isolated. And with big cities and population centers, there's so many people that you cannot really make the same mental connections or social connections that you should. That would be like if we we're in a village of 200 people, we know everyone. I'm not saying you have to go live in a village in the woods, but if you live in a city, you can become atomized, even though there's, there's so many people around you that you just lose that humanity. And you have to intentionally go about, you know, look people in the eyes, say hello to everyone that you see. Big smile. That's so powerful. And barely anyone does it these days, at least that I've found. Uh, and that at a macro level is going to make people feel more isolated and, you know, fall away from the truth of living and, and being healthy. Uh, not enough outdoor exposure, not enough sunlight exposure. They kind of go hand in hand um, at a macro level. Blue light, massive one. Artificial light in our offices, gyms, schools, universities. The street lights we have are now these energy saving LEDs. They're banning incandescent light bulbs. All of that has a meaningful increase like on our health, our metabolism, our skin health, uh, how we feel, our anxiety, depression, our sleep. So I think that we need to move back to the incandescent heat kind of based light bulbs at a macro level if we need artificial light. And ideally, we just have the sunlight uh, for most of our needs for light overall. The use of synthetic materials plastics, all these chemicals that we don't know the long-term benefits of. I tweeted about this yesterday. I'm not going to wait for a study to come out where they've said, yeah, we used this compound for 40 years and we measured everyone's bloods and yeah, there was no, no evidence that this is actually harmful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of the time they will say that and then 40 years later, this guy, they've all got cancer from asbestos. So, whoops. And these synthetic chemicals that we're breathing in and putting in our clothes and laundry detergent and wearing the polyester and everything, all of that, there's no real safety concerns that I want to be involved with. Oh, sorry, there's no safety concerns being raped and they just send out these products without the real uh, understanding of what they're doing. So the more we do that as a society, the more health issues we're going to have down the line. So I tend to just say, look, blanket rule. I'm not going to have any of these 
in my body, in my home, and then, you know, if it's good for me, which it usually isn't, then good for the people that had it 40 years later. I'm just gonna say no to all these synthetics and chemicals and things. Nature knows best. Pretty much all the time that we are moving away from nature, synthetic, man-made, isolated, take this pill instead of going out in the sun, it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. And I don't want to be involved in that experiment. There's a lot more that I could say about society in general, but uh, there are some of the ways. Also, okay, okay, so societal truth. One interpretation of that could be people, you know, this like trans, all of this stuff that they're saying because people are too afraid to speak the truth. Hey, actually, that's not good. Like, you shouldn't be telling kids that. Um... But everyone's too afraid to say the truth and what they what they actually think because these other mechanisms from the press or the media or they get fired from their job for stating the obvious that is another kind of gross mechanism that society has right now that is uh, negatively impacting anyone so I would say to always speak your truth always say what's on your mind and don't be scared to say the truth you may be wrong sometimes but if you honestly spoke your truth in the moment, I don't believe that there's any negatives that can come from that. You will be rewarded, or at least protected. If you spiritually act in your good conscience and how, and don't succumb to the fear about any of this stuff, about sunscreen, about trans stuff, about immigration, you have to speak your truth. Because otherwise, that's going to eat away at your soul. Yeah, so this is kind of, I guess, a little bit related. How do we address plastics? Will they continue to lower testosterone generationally until our species is infertile? I think if you go down the path that a lot of people seem to be going, where the clothes they wear are plastic, the sheets that they sleep in are plastic, the water that they drink from is from a plastic bottle. The food that they eat is made out of plastic, oh sorry, packaged in plastics. Microplastics in the air and the water. Yeah, that is, as we can see, making more soy boys and lowering fertility in general. I want the music to stop. There we go. If you go down that path of everything you do, having plastic in it, then yeah, I think at a macro level society is going to become infertile. Luckily, we don't have to participate in that. You can make your own choices, personal responsibilities. Yes, it's not as convenient uh, to have things only in glass, to filter your water, to do any of these things, which, you know, it, it may be less convenient. It is less convenient, but things like going to the butcher with a glass Tupperware and asking them to weigh your meat in that rather than getting the plastics. And I, I still have meat packaged in plastic. I still sometimes use products that are packaged in plastic and I try not to, but I'm rather, I'd rather have raw milk that has plastic, put it in the glass as soon as I get it, than not have raw milk at all, for example. And I believe when you're detoxing yourself, you're strong, healthy otherwise, and you've minimized your plastic consumption as much as is possible, a little bit is not something to be worried about. I'm still feeling high testosterone and strong and, and fertile with those small influences of plastic in my life. So how do we address them? Ideally, when I'm health minister, a lot of them will be banned for as much as possible for plastic water bottles. And you know, there's the whole environmental concern of single use plastics, throwing them away. Uh, becoming backed up in the ocean and things. So there are there are macro, I guess, government regulations. I'm not a fan of those, but if it's for something that's going to improve the health of the people, uh, there are some options that we could pursue there. And now we can get to the chat questions. I'm going to scroll back up. What's my opinion on male fashion? 
so what what does it mean by fashion you know uh, so there's two sides of this there's the current fashion world which is this kind of androgynous weird high fashion they're promoting ugly things sick looking people it's not healthy it's all about you know trying to be strange and push the envelope and they're not celebrating true beauty and, and life force so that fashion world is not something that I agree with but I think fashion and how we look in aesthetics is obviously very very important and I try to look good I do look good <laughs> um, in my day-to-day -day life I, I dress well you know I, I wear polos uh, cotton linen there's ways that aren't of looking good and presentable and comfortable and healthy that don't mean you have to be in that weird kind of fashion world. I wear my own clothes mostly, the ones that I design uh, at Soul Gym. This polo is from there, the shorts I'm wearing, Soul Shorts. I like to wear things that I'm comfortable in, that I could throw punches and kicks or run in a lot of the time, loose but still fitted appropriately. Uh, in the gym it's the same, you know, I could wear a linen button up to the gym um, and then also wear that same thing to dinner. I believe in looking good, I don't believe in wearing slides and sweatpants out to dinner, being comfortable all the time. Like, you can be comfortable and look good, but that doesn't mean you have to look like a slob. So. Yeah, there's a way, you have to find your own style. That may not be dressing the exact same as me because to you, I think there, there's an int intuitive internal sense of what you feel good in, what you look good in, that meshes with your own personal energy, your physique. Uh, and there are some general guidelines that, you know, color matching and all the rest of it that you can go to that maybe specifics of which are a little bit too in depth for this talk, but yeah, fashion is very important. Like, you, if you want to inspire others, you have to look good. Your physique has to be on point. You have to be well groomed. These are not feminine things. If you look at the warriors of old in armies, they've got these lion helmets. They've got regalia of, of bright colors, and and they look like an imposing force. And that's all fashion, in a way. Also to think about the symbols and things that you adorn yourself with have a resonant energy in themselves. That's to keep in mind. <clears throat> how can you advocate for eating raw meat and how do you deal with the parasites? <laughs> I can advocate for raw meat because I have researched and read a lot. Here we go, yeah. Tegan, my mum's watching. Can you please explain why you eat raw? So, why do I eat raw? What happens to something when you burn it? You have a fire, you have wood or anything else you're getting rid of in a bonfire, you're burning it and what's left? What's left is this charcoal. Everything kind of breaks down in response to the extreme heat. Cooking is, in certain contexts, the same process just at a smaller level you put a potato that hasn't been cooked you've just picked it from the ground then you put it in the ground it grows more potatoes it's alive it's a living thing there's a living resonant energy within that you cook a potato and then put it in the ground it rots away so that life force has been like whatever that etheric connection is that gets separated once the food is cooked or burnt and that's one side of it. The other side of it is purely nutritionally enzymes, water soluble vitamins, minerals, they break down and they break apart and they get destroyed at a certain level of cooking, at a certain temperature. So while if you're just slightly warming up something, it may not make that much of a difference. If you're really charring it or you're cooking everything, uh, you are decreasing the nutrition and absorbability of it. It's the same with the pasteurization of milk. Raw milk that hasn't been heated up has bacteria inside it. And bacteria are our friends. They help to break down what's inside milk and all the other food that we have. 
And if you cook something, you kill those bacteria, so you're not getting the appropriate uh, nutrition from it because the bacteria are dead. You're consuming dead matter. So that's the general principles of raw foods. I, anyone that's interested, I learned pretty much everything about raw foods from a guy called Oginus Vonda Planets. He has several books out, but the main one is We Want to Live. So I recommend getting that book and reading it. He goes way, way more in depth than I have. So knowing all this information and then testing it in my own life, having raw meat, raw milk, raw eggs, fruit obviously you eat in its raw form. Uh, I'll still cook things like rice, but for the most part, I'm trying to eat raw foods in general. And the digestibility is night and day. You never feel bloated. You never feel like that heavy, like bloated stomach feeling after a meal. You don't get that on raw foods. To me, that just shows your body's absorbing it. The enzymes that are still in the raw foods are helping you digest it. So like that's just my scientific experiment of my own life I need to eat less food I digest it better I have more energy my physique is improving and that to me is all the evidence I need that the, my theory or the theory of other people that raw foods are more nutritious and beneficial is true so I'm telling people that how do I deal with the parasites so you're only getting food from reputable high quality grocers or butchers or farmers as is what you should do even if you cook the food uh, and you don't eat meat that is festering away with parasites simple as that I had a parasite test done when I was in Miami recently and I told this lady about my raw food diet and I'd been eating close to a year you know raw as much as possible at that point and she was you know pretty concerned that we were gonna have a lot of parasites I had effectively zero you're never gonna have zero parasites in your body it's just not how it works but the levels were so low that it was pretty much non-existent not an issue so I don't believe that raw food creates parasites in the body and it's more so a question of of if your body is very heavy in toxins and dead matter waste matter that's more likely you're gonna have parasites inside of you <clears throat> hopefully that explains for your mum why I eat raw. Another, you know, quick one on that is how does it feel when you eat a well done steak? It's chewy, it's hard to eat, um, and then it sits in your stomach very heavily. Compared to a, you know, a very rare steak, it kind of melts in your mouth, it falls apart, it dissolves properly, and it's just that same principle. I'm just taking it to the next level of like, okay, well, we don't cook it at all, and you'll find that meat does dissolve in your mouth like uh, like honey does in that way if you chew it properly when it's raw so that's another thing it's just better thoughts on journaling how can I journal better I don't journal I'm not saying it's a bad pro process I have journaled when I need to but I think for me because I do so much writing anyway that what I need to get out gets out if you're not if you don't have a social media presence then definitely write to yourself understand specifically what you want in your life write about that and get the thoughts and things that may be running around in your head onto paper because once it's out of your head and you've written it down it seems to get rid of a lot of that BS so journaling can be great for that. Bit of chocolate for me. What I say to people that I've coached in the past, in the morning, you have your journal, write out how you want your day to go. How do you want to be as a person? What do you want to achieve? Visualizing that in concrete written terms can really, you've really kind of created how your day is going to go in the morning. And journaling is a tool for that. And then at the end of the day, have a five minute session where you write down what happened, how did I feel when these things happened? How could I be better tomorrow? What are some things that are annoying me? Get them out on paper. As I said before, if you think of something over and over and then you get it out on paper, it kind of clears your mind.
Excuse me, I'm just chewing. <clears throat> How to naturally re reverse myopia. So, that's, you know, eye degeneration. You're losing your sight. More sunlight and less blue light. A lot of people are staring at screens all day. They're not getting natural sunlight. They're not viewing the sunrise and sunset, which you should do. That natural red light at sunrise and sunset is very healing to the mitochondria in your eyes and general cell repair. If you're not getting that over years and then you're getting artificial blue light, staring at a screen and phone, uh, that has an impact just like it has an impact on our skin and the rest of our bodies, it affects how well the eyes work and uh, if you couple that with your eyes are a little bit bad I'm gonna put glasses on then the glasses that you wear all the time when you need to see they make your eyes weaker so it's like if I was using uh, crutches to get around my legs would get weaker because I'm no longer using them same with glasses so I would minimize glasses use as much as possible and ensure that I'm getting sunrise and sunset, minimizing blue light exposure, eating things high in taurine like fresh seafood, astaxanthin is good, zeaxanthin are both good supplements that are going to help the eyes repair and also believing that you can repair your myopia in general. Uh, I have a few tweets on this, I actually got community noted when I spoke about this before but a lot, a lot of people have improved their eyesight without glasses and uh, there's I think endmyopia.org is a website that has a lot of methods for it also exercising your eyes your eyes are controlled by muscles in the head the, the muscles behind that's what you know you can move to the left to the right right they're muscles if you're only looking in front of you and usually it's a very short distance to a screen then you're not using those muscles and so the focus goes out uh, you're not looking at the horizon like we may have done in our caveman days or just being outside. So those muscles atrophy, just like as if I, if I never gripped on something, my forearm muscles would get weaker. And the same is true with the eye muscles. So making sure that you have intentional use of those muscles and you're outside looking far distances and close, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, mixing it up, that can strengthen the eye muscles, improving eye health and improving myopia. Blessings of real to you, Sobra, and back to you, Acolyte of the Sun. <clears throat> Thoughts on nightshades. So nightshades, potatoes, tomatoes. Nightshades is a scary term. I think if you're healthy and all the rest of it, you can handle eating potatoes and tomatoes. I've never personally found a massive issue with them at all. But again, listen to yourself. If you're in a state where you eat potatoes consistently or tomatoes and they give you trouble, then yeah, maybe you cut them out and see if that makes a difference. Nightshades in general, it's your own experimentation. What's your perspective on the recent eclipse shenanigans? So I wasn't in the area where I could see the eclipse. I wouldn't have gone out and watched it anyway. I honestly I haven't researched it too much, but I have a few people that I trust in these things and they said not to look at it because there's just some level of spooky juju where the sun's being blocked out that it feels better to me intuitively to not like go out and absorb that uh, you know historically the old wives tales they say to be inside if an eclipse is happening I don't know too much about it but uh, there are a few weird things going on with like people having rituals or organizations and NASA's firing rockets at the moon at the same time. Uh, some strange stuff. So even if it doesn't affect you, some people do believe in its esoteric significance. I don't really know what that all means, honestly.
How would one go about healing a torn rotator cuff? It seems like chin-ups out agitate it the most. I also do physical labor five days a week in and out of the lumber yard. Yeah, any any shoulder issues is usually uh, we have so like hanging from something is one of the best ways you can improve space in the shoulder capsule. You're getting that mobility of moving it back. Most of the time we're doing this, arms forward, lifting things, physical labor, it's all here, it's all down here. When we need to have more of this and opening up that joint, allowing the blood and other fluids, lymph to go and heal. So hanging as often as possible throughout the day and avoiding things that are agitating it. Like don't do chin ups if it makes it worse right now. Um, find some other type of work. It's usually an overdevelopment of the front shoulder, the chest, benching a lot, and then that unnatural bench movement, just kind of more rear delt, more rows, strengthening that back, which is gonna keep the shoulders up and in the position, which is gonna give it the space to operate and, and move. Do I ever feel imposter syndrome? I definitely have in the past. Now I've been doing this for so long that, and I've seen the results in myself and other people who I give advice to, that I know that it works. I know what I'm on to, you know, be all and end all of information, but it doesn't do it doesn't help to feel imposter syndrome and maybe you will inevitably whenever you do something new but then you do that something new over and over again you get better at it it's objective that you're improving and being better so that imposter syndrome goes away the more that you can practice and be a better person in all things <laughs> thoughts on owning too much stuff do you live a minimalist lifestyle yeah this is a great one there's that, that quote, you know, you think you own things, but the things that you have actually own you. And it's that mental attachment to my car, my house, my things. And there's a certain level of freedom that you get when you don't own as much. I love having things and having my own clothes, things I have in my environment at home, computer, Whatever it is, I think that that's good to own things. I don't think like there's that whole, you will own nothing and be happy. That's what they want for you. So I think owning things is good, but then you have to understand the philosophical question of, you actually don't own anything. You can call it my thing, but it's just a thing in this physical reality that mentally you're claiming ownership of. There's no real like even owning property or a house, it's like you've signed something, but you don't actually, there's no mechanism by which you are the complete Lord and ownership of that. And what the quote means, these things will own you. And what that is, is if something scratches your car because you think it's my car, and then you get upset that your car has been damaged. And really, that's a mental fabrication of nothing that doesn't need to exist. That's not to say to accept damage to your property all the time, but it's to understand that that is a self-imposed mechanism of ownership, which isn't actually real. You don't own other people. You don't own your boyfriend or girlfriend. You own, like you have yourself and your body and your mind. And that's really all you truly own. That's all you truly have. And therefore, they're the things that are the most important to keep in shape and be, you know, cognizant of. Because everything else can be taken away. You actually don't own things. As far as the minimalism part of things, I've spent a couple of years traveling around in America. A couple of suitcases is really all I had. And I had a few things in storage at home, but it's very, very freeing to not have things to worry about a lot of people like they find storage their house is full there's just all of these things that their your mind then has to process it's easy to have a messy home if you have more things do you really need 30 plates probably not you need a few if you have dinner guests but if you have 30 plates and you only ever use three of them most of the time maybe it would be better to not have that in your home and all the junk 
that doesn't really serve a purpose. I think the things that you use every single day should be of high quality. Your bed, your clothes that you use often, uh, your kitchen equipment, all these things which you can own, which improve your life that you use daily. Invest in high quality versions of those. Don't just get garbage and things for the sake of owning them. Because as I said, they can own you. It's more to worry about. What type of exercises do you recommend for females? So I think all females will benefit from the weight training that I recommend for dudes as well, but at a lower frequency and ideally focusing more lower body um, than upper body to create that feminine physique. But there's something that weight training will do for you in terms of increasing your muscle gain and metabolism that you can't really get from just, just Pilates. But things like Pilates and yoga are these lower impact, more feminine energy things that can be used in more frequency if you're a girl. Walking is great. Understanding how to walk properly so that you're utilizing your glutes and the back chain uh, is very, very helpful for women, especially dudes as well. And then also facilitating that within your period cycle. Because there are going to be certain times of your period where you're lower energy and some where you're higher energy. And it can be good to schedule the more intense, masculine, uh, energized, heavy weightlifting for those periods. So thinking about yourself as in that month cycle is very important. And then scaling it back, chilling out when you're coming into the parts of your cycle where you're depleted. Uh, walking more and just taking it easy is going to be important there. Dudes, it's like you have a day cycle. So it's, it's different in that conception. So understanding the difference between males and females, but I definitely think every woman can benefit from some level of weight training as well as those other ones that I mentioned. Am I growing my hair to look like Nick Cage? Wasn't a thought to me. You know, he's a pretty cool guy. If we look similar, that's cool, but not intentionally. I'm just growing it out because I like growing it out. <laughs> Is the soul gym bag coming back? Yes. Uh, the old gym bags that we had were when we used to be Soul Apparel. So Soul Gym, new design, they'll be coming soon. 100% denim. Uh, if you're on that email list, I'll announce when they're out. Any encouragement for my 20-year-old cousin? He was trapped in his house as a neat for six years and I convinced him to go to the gym. Good on you. Good on you for extending that way of living to him and getting him out of the house and, and going to the gym. That's where it all starts, man. So many people start with the gym and then they realize the results from the gym. They go, wow, if I put effort into something, I can improve my life. That's awesome. That's usually the first domino that's required to have everything else improve. So uh, encouragement for him would be, look, the past is the past. You understand that now the future, you're 20 years old. People change their lives at 30. You're 20, it's so young. You have so much ahead of your life. And like I said, the past is the past, it's done. Now, look forward to the incredible future that you can have, despite your past as a neat. It doesn't matter. Uh, keep up the gym, keep on doing things to get you out of the house as much as possible, uh, and you'll make it. How do I take care of my hair? I have a long video on this in Soul Club soulclub.me if you want to sign up there to watch the video but in the short run it's usually sorry the summary of my hair care I'm brushing my hair three or four times a day I wash it with uh, soul sense soul soap when it's a bit you know sweaty dirty and sometimes I put olive oil in it otherwise it's about having a good diet sunlight sea water and uh, improved blood flow to the scalp, headstands, sauna um, on occasion. That's really like there's no chemicals or processes that can really help you if your hair is not being supported by your diet and your lifestyle. Sunlight on the scalp, super important. Avoiding blue light all the time. 
Uh, stop using shampoo in terms of the chemical versions because they can affect your scalp health and therefore your hair health. Filtering your shower water, not using blasting hot all the time on your scalp is important as well. Like I said, further info for that is in Soul Club. My father has early onset Alzheimer's. Any tips on how to slow down his progression? So look, this is not something that I'm gonna say that I have the exact answers to, but what I think Alzheimer's is right now is a collection of heavy metals in the body and other toxins that are impeding the electrical signals from the brain to the rest of the body. So if you have a heavy metal accumulation from lifestyle, aluminum or mercury or whatever else, um, then that can impede the electrical signals your brain's trying to send and your hands shake or they don't work as well. So in general, these mental, not mental, these physical chronic conditions that occur that we call like Alzheimer's or dementia or whatever, it's, it's all the kind of same. It's like an accumulation of toxins, accumulation of heavy metals that there are several ways to detox with. So heavy metal binding herbs to, you should investigate, uh, sauna, um, raw foods, raw butter is very healing for the brain and they're going to enable you to detox whatever's in the body, raw fats. And look up Ogenus's recommendations on that. The guy I mentioned before, Ogenus von der Planets, in his book he says, you know, for Alzheimer's, do this, do that. Again, improving sleep, uh, herbal compounds to break up things and absorb heavy metals and detox. So doing things new for the brain as much as is possible to promote the neural connections, maybe eating raw brain, you know, like supports like in the ancient Indian wisdom. If you have heart issues, eating raw heart, sunlight, less blue light. Same thing for the autism, mild autism. I believe that that's, uh, you know, an issue with the childhood injectable treatments that they may give kids and get these autistic diagnoses after these injections and all the rates are rising as these inject injections are increasing. So, you know, may, I, I think they are related in the same way. Ogenus also has recommendations for that in a natural way. <clears throat> yes, this, this live stream will be going up on the channel as well after this. Tips for very dry skin and eczema. So something is causing the eczema and the dry skin. Maybe it's showering in hot tap water. All those chemicals in there. So filter your shower water, shower less. Ideally, if you can clean yourself in the ocean. Getting more sunlight is a game changer for any skin condition conditions. Uh, eating more raw fats. Fats create the moisture in your skin. That's why we apply things like olive oil or coconut oil to the skin or tallow, and that can improve that those problem areas. But in general, if you're eating more, your body is gonna be able to repair those cell walls uh, with the fats to be become less dry. And it's not always about adding something to the outside, but eating stuff as well, so your body can utilize them. As I said with the shower, it's all fixable. Changing your diet, if you notice that if you eat certain things um, that inflame it, obviously eat less with those. Seed oils is obviously an issue that gives a lot of people skin, skin problems, so considering what you're eating. Joe had a good question, according to a few people. Best tips for mental alchemy, particularly trying to influence low vibrational friends and loved ones. So I'm gonna plug my book here, The Soul Way, S-O-L-W-A-Y. It's available on Amazon right now. I have so many passages in there talking about this kinds of thing. How do we be this high, very, higher vibrational influence amongst 
you know, our family and friends who aren't on the same wavelength. So if you want like real in-depth things that you can practice and refer to, go check out my book, The Soul Way. It's available on Amazon. You can get it anywhere. As far as what I'll say now, you can only ever be a good influence and lead by example. You can talk about things and make suggestions and help people if they're coming to you with advice and they, sorry, for advice, but they usually come to you if they can see you. If you're super vital, getting more muscle, you have more energy, you're smashing your goals, you're improving yourself, you you don't let things get you down, you're not being angry at people. All of these things, people will be like, whoa, what's happened to him? How do I get like that? And some people it will trigger because maybe it invalidates what they're doing or they get upset that you're improving yourself. But all the, that in itself is an environment and a challenge for you to better yourself. And in an environment where not everything is going to go your way, how can you be mentally strong enough to test that out that you're going to stick to your guns and not let it upset you? Like, so think about it that way. If it is a very tricky situation, how can you be this like monk that still takes care of his business and loves them despite them being very triggering to you and upsetting and like wanting to bring you down. That's the real test. So think about it that way. As I said in the book, there's a lot that I wrote about. I'm sure if you search my Telegram or Twitter, there's other pieces of writing as well. But it's, it's a great one, man. And be, and be grateful that you have this opportunity to improve yourself in those situations. And as I said, lead by example. If you're not taking your own advice and having the results on that, then why should people take you, why should they take your advice? When you tell them like, oh, you should be eating this and this, and then you like cheat on your diet, they'd be like, what was that about? Or if you get upset about something, you'd be like, hey, don't worry, like it's all good. So you can understand like there can be sometimes a situation where you'll like, you'll see them doing something wrong, but maybe you've done it last week that it can come across as a bit hypocritical. I and mean, we want to avoid that. Uh, do everything with love. Always understand that they're not doing it consciously to attack you and hurt you. It's this unconscious programming in their head that may just be expressing itself on you. And not to get upset or take it personally because that's, you know, that's a mistake in, in your spiritual development to do so. All that being said, if you're constantly around people that are just really bringing you down, you got to make a, some sort of switch up and, and don't spend time with the people that are like that. If, if they are not, you know, if you don't have to have those people in your life, your elevation will require your isolation from some of those people. And it's perfectly fine. You may lose friends. You may change the people that you hang out with. That's perfectly fine. But if you want to improve yourself and elevate yourself, you will have to do that. It's all natural and it can be a lot easier just to stay away from those people rather than like having this fight response testing environment all the time so that's what i would consider <coughs> what characteristics do you look for in red meat before consuming raw you know, local farmer as much as possible, grass fed and finished, organic. <clears throat> and then if you can see the quality of the meat, it's like a nice dark red and smells great. Like there's no off smell about it. You're pretty good. It's not too complicated. Fresh is better than frozen. If you can get that, I still have frozen meat sometimes. Yes, raw food contains structured water, which is wonderfully hydrating. This is an important point. I've noticed that I need to drink less water and less electrolytes when I'm having raw meat and fruit, raw food in general, raw milk, you know, unpasteurized orange juice. All these things are much more hydrating because they haven't gone through a heating process and the water in the fruit, in the meat, in the milk still has its life force and the structure of the molecules of the water within are in such a manner that our cells can absorb it better. So you won't need as much water or electrolytes when you have a fully raw diet. So that's, that's a really interesting 
cool point from eating raw foods. <laughs> I've switched to an all organic diet and cut out all the bullshit. I've introduced raw milk and my eczema has gone substantially worse. Do you think even raw dairy is bad for some people? So a couple of factors. I would have to know what is like cut out all the bullshit. Maybe there's something still in there that is aggravating. A lot of people are like, I've cut out all the bullshit, but I'm still having raw oats or something like that. Grains that haven't been prepared in a certain way can still be irritating to the gut and the body. So I would just say like, maybe there's something else to, to look into that if it's all healthy, you think, but it's still not ideal. If there's too much like uncooked plant matter, that can be irritating. Um, the other side of it is that when you have raw milk, or any raw fats for the first time, it enables your body to detox. So you can see a short term increase in these symptoms, but they're actually just your body getting out garbage for the first time. The organic diet as well. If you're finally eating foods that are much higher in nutritional content, they can give your body the fuel that it needs to get rid of the garbage. And that may be expelled through the skin. If your other detox pathways, it's not ideal, but your other detox pathways might be like, you know, stuffed up in the gut. Then that can be something to look at. Um, yeah, just some things like it's, it's personally contextual in that situation, not one size fits all with health in general. So there's just some things to investigate, test if you never get it and you only get it when you're getting raw dairy, maybe switch to raw butter for a while, see if it can continues. What do you think about Ray Pete? You know, he's done a lot of great work. Really great man who dedicated his life to figuring out health for people. And I've taken a lot of his principles on board in terms of, I was already eating a load of carbohydrates my whole life, but understanding how they're stress protective by having sugars uh, to decrease cortisol and improving metabolism and things. It's great, I love his work. I do think there are some things that, you know, not everyone is going to have all the answers uh, in that way. And he, had, he thought that sunlight was best when you get it on your body through a window, which I obviously don't think is correct, but an incredible man and a force for good in the nutrition science world. <laughs> when is the Soul Affirmations track dropping? Don't think I've forgotten. Look, this is something I could knock up together quite quickly. I don't know why I haven't really done it. I've been on the road, it's a bit hard to record, but I can record now in this setup that I have. So yeah, maybe that's something I get into in the next week or so. Soul Affirmations track. Uh, I am releasing an album of music soon. Kind of atmospheric, forest, uh, ambience music. So maybe I do a version of that where I'm speaking affirmations as well, or maybe it's Hertz music and it's a different thing. I, I need to work out the particulars, but it will come. Trust me. What do you use on your hair and face? So most of the time, hair, like I said before, extra virgin olive oil occasionally. The face is usually a tallow balm of some kind. Pretty simple stuff, sometimes olive oil. <laughs> Thank you for answering Tropical Aragorn. I like that. Tropical Aragorn. Tegan, just a, a thing on the eyesight she shared. Big facts on the eyesight. My whole family have glasses. We went to the eye doctor one time when I was seven or eight. My brother got glasses and I was on the verge of needing them. I naturally started training my eyesight every day, holding one finger up in each hand at different distances and focusing between the two fingers, training those eye muscles and far off in the distance object. 
2020 eyesight since then. So imagine if Tegan had been prescribed these eyeglasses and effectively not utilized her eye muscles as much and then the eyesight degrades. So this is something that the industry of ophthalmology, I think that's the right word, <laughs> uh, people say that they're told they need glasses, they get them, their eyes get weaker, they need heavier glasses and the cycle continues. So I've seen many examples of people saying, I fix, fix my eyesight naturally without glasses, as Tegan has done. So thank you for sharing. The Jester, hey man, I've been following your stuff for a while. I just want to say thank you. RS, don't know what RS means. I've betted my life for maybe 10 times by following some of your advice. Seriously, I just want to stop by and say thank you. Thank you, sir, for listening. Makes it all worth it. Thank you, the Jester. Any tips for dealing with dermatitis? Loving the olive oil soap, by the way, it's great stuff. So any skin condition, right? Decrease things that may be uh, irritating it. That could be tap water is a huge one. Skin creams you're putting on, soaps you're putting on, shampoos, um, synthetic clothing like polyester can leach things into your skin and cause irritation. Build up of sweat and dirt that you're not getting rid of. Uh, they also said they're loving the olive oil soap, by the way. That's great stuff. Yes, it is incredible stuff. They're just restocked now. So if you want the best olive oil soap on the market, organic extra virgin olive oil is what we use with this. Go to soulsense.com. I'm going to throw this in the chat. So this sells out, you know, every time. So go check it out if you want. This is the soap that I created which is very powerful. There are some great olive oil soaps out there, but they use low quality pomace olive oil, which is like the waste that they have at the bottom of the barrel once they've e extracted the rest for food olive oil. My olive oil is organic olive oil, olive oil and it's extra virgin. So really the best you can get and no other ingredients other than water and the lye, which is broken down in the soap making process, but that's what creates the foaming action to actually clean. So nothing else in it, no preservatives, no anything. So go check it out. Uh, Stefan is loving the olive oil soap, but the dermatitis stuff, yeah. So as much as you can, whatever, be 15 times since I made it. It's, uh, it's pretty fun, but thanks for listening. Grand Rising, what's the food you wish you slept on less when younger? $5, hey, thank you. I'll buy my espresso with that tomorrow. Appreciate it, Kiowa. What's the food you wish you slept on less when younger? Raw milk, it's gotta be raw milk. When you're young, you don't have the money to buy your own food, so it's kind of what your parents give you. And my parents were great, pretty healthy as far as these things go. They instilled in me some great, great food and diet stuff, but they just weren't aware of, you know, how much better raw foods are. So what I'm gonna give my kids as they grow up is, is raw milk as much as possible and raw meat. They're really, those two foods are, along with raw honey, the most nutritious, muscle building, bone strengthening, uh, everything that you can get. So if I could go back in time, I would have those raw foods in that way as much as possible. Because they're, they're gonna be the things that facilitate your growth, brain activity, health in general, uh, as much as possible, so. Olympic lifting versus powerlifting versus bodybuilding, or do all three. So yeah, I mean, you have some Olympic lifts while you bodybuild with the barbell. Powerlifting, I never personally got into. I tried to lift heavy, but I've never gone like, all right, what's the heaviest I could possibly lift? Because powerlifting itself, it's more about what is the technique that I can use to move this particular barbell in a certain way to like clear the rep so that I can win the competition? If that's the sport you want to go into, that's great. But it has some ramifications in that it's very compressive on the spine. It's, uh, there are some form tweaks that 
can negatively affect the body if you're not also doing other things to counteract those forces all the time. That to me, and also when you're really heavy lifting, you can, like there's a higher chance of injuring yourself. For me, I would rather go a little bit lighter than that, improve my body and how I feel and perform in the rest of my life than chase this particular number for powerlifting. It just hasn't been a goal of mine. So bodybuilding has been my focus. Uh, now it's more so how can I bodybuild in a way that is consistent with primal movement as well that I feel stronger, perform better, have no back pain and aches, which I finally cracked the code of over the last year or so, but still build my body. That's where I'm at now. So yeah, what are, what are your goals? Do you want to be a very good Olympic lifting and, and compete in competitions? Then you're going to have to do Olympic lifts. The barbell itself is not a particularly ancestrally consistent distribution of weight or movement with the, the, the deadlift and other things. So if you do those only is it, as your exercise, you can get into some aches and pains, which I did uh, previously. So it really depends on what your goals are and what you're willing to tolerate, how your body feels while doing it, all the rest of it. How to deal with lack of sun exposure while on Accutane. Stop taking Accutane. <laughs> that's, that's the issue. If, if something, a medication that you're taking is making your skin so weak that the sun just blasts through you and you get these mad sunburns, that is not a good thing to be taking. There are ways of resolving your acne that do not require your, this pill which destroys your liver health makes you unable to go outside. I will stand by that wholeheartedly. There's ways of changing your diet, your environment, where you don't need to take this Accutane. There are so many other issues. I've seen people's health get completely wrecked by this medication. So get off the Accutane would be my advice. We're all gonna make it bras. So true. Favorite travel hacks? Are they hacks or are they just being consistent and disciplined on those natural ways of life that support health? That's what I guess I would say. We travel, we're out of our general routine, we're on planes and airports, but whatever we do have control of is if I go to a new city, I'm watching the sunrise and sunset and that's going to mitigate uh, jet lag as much as possible. Going out and exercising as soon as you get off the plane. Still eating well, you know, going to Whole Foods in America, getting the best food that you can raw, not eating out all the time. It's like, oh, I don't have a kitchen. Then like, okay, we'll just still get your groceries. You don't necessarily need to go out. I also stay in Airbnb, so I do have my own kitchen. Not that I even need a kitchen anymore because I'm eating raw. So I usually just go to a grocery store or farmer's market and then just munch on it straight up. Travel hacks. Uh, yeah, just, just try and stay consistent with the things that you know are going to improve your or maintain your health and not letting the dissonance of the travel impede on that. Like a lot of people, oh, I was traveling, my whole health has gone out there, I didn't get to the gym. It's like, you can still go to the gym in these other cities. You don't need to just throw out everything out the window just because you were traveling. And it's kind of like traveling, so I needed to have 10 beers and then eat a, eat a kebab. It's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> can you post a bulking guide? Give dates ready to go snack on them between meals. You don't need to put fat on to a large degree just to bulk. Keep the raw foods up. Uh, you can put on mass without getting fat if you stick to the raw foods, high nutritional foods. I think I have posted a bulking guide or thread back in the day, but my diet has kind of changed since then. But really it's just eating more, being more intense in the gym and eating more healthy foods. There's no reason to just eat seed or slop because I'm bulking, therefore I need to need to have it. It's a little bit of coke. <clears throat> oh, 
Are tanning beds really that bad? I feel like there's a fake fear campaign around them. Uh, I've never used tanning beds, so I'm not gonna say that they're good, I don't know. I would say it's like any machine that has isolated light frequencies that aren't the sun, it's gonna be worse than getting sunlight. Now, is getting a dose of UV that is relatively low, like not completely blasting yourself, is that better than not having any UV because it's so cold you never go outside? I don't know. Maybe it is better than zero UV. I know that uh, they used to give UV lamps to kids in, in Russia as uh, some form of treatment for them, and I'm sure that that is better than getting no sun whatsoever for your whole winter. I just can't personally say because I haven't used them, so... Maybe there is some fake fear campaign around them, but if you're blasting yourself with hours of really direct UV like that, that's probably not ideal either. It's also, it may be cold, but you can still pop the shirt off and go outside in winter. Get a bit of cold exposure and, and get that UV light. There's, even if it's cloudy, the sun is still there, UV is still there. It may just be a bit more uncomfortable, so I'd recommend doing that. Yeah, look into what your dairy cows are eating, maybe reacting to something in their diet. Yeah, some some dairies even feed them like... Uh, I heard about this dairy in Florida that feeds their cows the waste uh, hops from a brewery. So the brewery makes their beer and then the waste hops they feed to the cows. That's not really like this already processed and used grain is then going to the cows and then you're getting milk from that. It's like... That's probably not good compared to just natural grass-fed cows having milk. So something to consider. That's why like, if you can get a local farm that you go and see or you talk to the farmer, then you can know what they're eating. is always going to be better for any food. Not Tom Cruise. I went back... Uh, how does one lock in, in your view? Been struggling to truly lock in on life and crush it in the goals I endeavor to achieve. How did you do it? What would you recommend? So how do you lock in? Interesting question. <clears throat> I find that I lock in the most when I really enjoy what I'm doing and I feel like it's useful and it's most aligned with my purpose. It's harder to lock in on doing Excel spreadsheet shit, which I've done in the past. So I would just try to change what you're working on so that it suits and feels more aligned within you because then that you're naturally going to lock in and be more engaged in doing that. Otherwise, Maybe it's something is like improving your sleep or decreasing a blue light, which is going to improve your dopamine. And then you just have like the idea of more focusing. Uh, semen retention, if you're a guy, uh, can help with that kind of masculine drive, aggression to like lock in and focus. Uh, otherwise, meditating. Meditating and just being able to... Meditation as the principle of focusing on not letting your mind like wander down here or there. Like this thought pops up and you go, oh, what did Steven think of me at the function last night? And blah, 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 blah. That can jump into your head when you're trying to lock in and focus on something. So meditating in general, if you have, you train that muscle of, nope, the thought's trying to take me down here. I'm just going to center back and doing that. That's a skill that can be developed. I also have periods where I lock in and then I relax and I'm not locked in for eight hours a day. It doesn't happen. It's not a thing. So understanding that maybe your workflow requires you to step back a little bit, improve the physical body, go for a beach swim, and then coming back and locking in. And like you're not going to lock in for four hours at a computer and, and feel good. Um, locking in in these like shorter work bursts 
is maybe more so something to try. Moving your phone away in the other room if you're trying to work on something is an important one so the notifications don't pop up for things when you're trying to focus. And yeah, just general healthy living. If you find that your focus is off, <coughs> could be because you had a shit meal last night. You know, and now your gut bacteria is messing up and your dopamine is not as good. My skin breaks out in the sun. Any recommendations for a sunscreen? So, no, I'm not going to recommend a sunscreen. If you want protection from the sun because you've had enough sun exposure for the day, just put on a shirt, put on a cap. If your skin is breaking out in the sun, maybe that is a function of the sun moving the blood around your skin, flushing things, opening the blood vessels, opening the pores, and you're getting rid of garbage that's been inside you. So I would improve, I would increase the amount of sun exposure or increase the frequency of sun exposure you're getting, you'll likely find that maybe you break out for a little bit because you're sweating more, you're getting rid of the garbage, uh, and then it, it kind of levels off and you feel good. I've never, I've seen one time where my friend would get rashes when he would ever go in the sun. It was because he was having a fresh lime juice in a beer, in a Corona, every time he was at the beach. And lime juice particularly, if there's a lot of it in the skin, in exposure to sunlight can irritate the skin. He was getting these like hives. So I don't know, that could be something if you're like squeezing lemon and lime juice on yourself or drinking that, like it's something, it's something that you're eating or putting on your skin that's reacting to the sunlight. It could be seed oils, so cleaning up your diet. Uh, but as far as like the sunlight is not the thing that's making you break out. It may be the mechanism that your body reacts to that, if you see what I mean. Will Soul merch be sold in Denmark, Europe soon? Every time I try to buy something, I'll get an error. Uh, we do ship to Europe for some things. Uh, if you could give me a bit more context on what you're trying to buy, then uh, that would be helpful. Maybe a different browser, but most things we, we should sell to those areas. Best piece of advice making IRL connections in the wellness space, any personal stories? Yeah, so really the the best connections that I've made have been a, as a result of Twitter and Instagram and years of interacting with people online before I ever met them in person. And they're, they're, they have been the, the deepest connections because they've known me for years online and we've engaged with each other's content and so forth for ages and then I went over to America and I met them excuse me so I guess a function of that but also in real life is being authentic and expressing who you are and being true to yourself and not just being someone because you think that they will like you more when you love yourself because you or you like yourself because you are who you know you are and you're exhibiting that authentically, that resonant energy, other people can feel it. They feel the permission. And in particular, the, the wellness space for me has been uh, engaging with people, supporting them, and then they support me, encouraging others. If, when I have, because I have a bigger account, if I see something online that I like, I'll send a DM and be like, hey man, keep it up, this is awesome. And that can be quite encouraging for people. Uh, it doesn't even matter if you don't have a big account, a lot of people will like silently support others. And if you can be the message that just says, like even if you have a small account, hey man, this really helped me. Thank you for sharing this. I support what you're doing. That is like very, very powerful to hear from someone. So that can be said in real life as well. Uh, aiming to do good and helping people out in general, all of those can kind of create the resonant personality that is gonna make authentic connections happen by, or naturally. What is my current workout split? So I, I don't know if you saw before, but I mentioned uh, earlier in the stream about my current training split, what I'm doing now. But right now it's upper body, lower body, sorry, 
upper body, rest day, lower body, rest day in a four day cycle. Sometimes I'll have two rest days after the lower body, maybe on the weekend. So lower volume, lower frequency, but more intensity, heaviness on the days that I do train. The upper body is gonna be uh, chest, shoulders, back, all together. And then the lower body, obviously, training legs. So, uh, and arms as well in the upper body, all at once. Good morning from England. Good morning, sir. The homeland for me. Oh, it's morning there already, true. What's your opinion on tanning beds? I just uh, actually earlier on discussed that if you want to scroll back. Hey, so a longer question, more advice centered. Find a DM. Yeah, DM me on Twitter. I'll get to that. Just say you're in the stream so I can get to it. Do you use methylene blue? Yes. I use Meraki blue. Uh, my guy Vance started that company. I use it. I don't think that it's necessary every day if you're living a healthy lifestyle, but it helps an incredible amount of people whose mitochondria may be negatively affected by their lifestyle or years of not really treating their body right. Uh, there's a lot of research on it, so methylene blue I'm a fan of. Sometimes if I'm traveling, I'll just get an extra boost for my mitochondria there. Favorite footwear picks? Um, Vivo Barefoot, I've, I've used a bunch. They're really great shoes. They have some natural material shoes as well, leather. Uh, I like Sol Low shoes. My buddy started that company. It's S-O-L-E-L-O -L -L -O shoes, if you Google that. They're great as well. Mostly barefoot if I can help it. I also wear Birkenstocks because they're quite, you know, just slip on, not constricting on your feet if you get a big size. And then also uh, the Vibrams, the five toed shoes are really great. I, I train in those. <clears throat> Ever do a podcast with James English? Sure, one day, open to it. I met him at Gold's Gym a while ago. Uh, I'm sure he would be open to it as well. We'll see. I'd like to do that in person if it happens. If uh, if the stars align, it'll happen. Best remedy for muscle soreness besides rest. So, yeah. Eating, getting the protein in that's going to repair your muscles. Carbohydrates to replenish the glycogen. Sunlight, sauna. Uh, it's going to encourage blood flow. Low intensity cardio, just chilling, running, moving the body, even if you're just doing this at home. If you're just like, your rest day is just you sitting on the couch, you're not getting that movement that is required to shift the nutrients into the muscles to repair and so on and so forth. So anything you can do that's gonna promote that is great. Uh, a hot bath with Epsom salts, magnesium in there, is gonna be very, really powerful to you know heal the muscles, repair the muscles to get rid of that soreness. Uh, stretching and and some, you know, massage techniques, self-massage can help as well. Yoga. Anything where you can release the muscle and the tightness that's there, promote blood flow and general movement of everything is going to help your muscle soreness as well as, as I said, eating the nutrients required. When is your raw optics glasses launching? I wish I could tell you. I It should be this month. But as soon as I know, I will post, uh, send out an email. So you guys know. When you when I know, you'll know. Is it healthy to read the news? Uh, short answer, no. It's gonna... Like... If the news was... Hey, this is what's happening in our world. Just so you to be aware and conscious of what's going on. Then it would be good to be informed of your community and what's going on. Unfortunately, it is a tool for people to own the news media to get you to focus on these things that are meant to make you feel afraid or get you to think a certain way and mind control you. In short, mind control you. So if you're getting that delivery to worry about these things which don't really matter in your day-to-day -day life over and over again and you're getting someone else's thoughts programmed into your mind, that's not healthy, that's not good for you, it's not going to help you in any day-to-day scenario so I haven't watched the news in years and you shouldn't either 
Do I hold crypto? Yes. I believe uh, in the power of Bitcoin to create a monetary system that's not in the control of central banks. So I have some crypto. I know you don't like AirPods due to the EMFs, but I wear wired AirPods. My phone is laying in my pocket next to my crotch, which isn't healthy either. So how do you navigate this dilemma? So, yeah. Uh, wired headphones and then using your phone in airplane mode so it's not sending signals either way is the way that I do it most of the time. Then I also have an old school iPod Nano, oh sorry, iPod Classic, which I load music onto, use wired headphones, and then the iPod doesn't have those like EMF capabilities of Wi-Fi or 5G or whatever. So that's much better to have in your pocket. And then you don't have the distraction of the phone uh, when you're working out, which is really cool. So iPod Classic. So I have a home reverse osmosis water filter or exclusively drink mineral spring water. Yeah. Uh, I have a water filter called a Zazen, which is like you feed it into the top and it goes through this system then sits in the bottom with these mineral stones and that creates really good water. And then I'll also buy a spring water and also refill big glass bottles at a spring that's local to me. You gotta find a spring.com. That's probably the best is natural spring water. If you can, you can get big glass gallon jugs, go every couple days to the spring. Game changer to have that access to water uh, all the time. Think that it would help with their health journeys. That would be my request. So we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this, let me know as a comment. Peace and love.